What's up everyone, my name is Jake Closet Tube and welcome back to another video where today I wanted to do a discussion on a topic that apparently a lot of people in the Pokemon community are talking about and that's the fact that we're gonna get Sinnoh Remix eventually. Everyone has this one thing on their mind. Will Sinnohs have Dynamaxes? Let's find out, shall we? And the first reason that everyone thinks that we're gonna get Dynamaxes in uh, Gen 4 Remix is because of the simple fact that, well, it's still Gen 8 hype so they gotta bring the feature over. But, it's Gen 8 hype. It's it's Gen 8 hype, they have to bring the feature over. But that's not true at all. The reason that people believe that this is what's gonna happen is because this is what Nintendo does. If a feature is good enough, they'll bring it over to the next game, and then the next game, because that's just how marketing works, and that's just what the people are used to. But obviously they're not gonna, <clears throat> but obviously they can't bring Dynamaxing to Sinnoh because it's exclusive to Galar. Obviously they can't bring Dynamaxing to Sinnoh because it's exclusive to Galar. But I'm sure you're probably thinking to yourself, eh, but Mega was exclusive to Kalos, you see? The reason I know it was exclusive to Kalos in the first place was because of the fact that that's where the Megastones were discovered. But the Megastones were from a meteor that, well, Megastones went all over the place. They can be found in Kanto and Hoenn. Meaning Mega is an exception because it goes from Pokemon all over the region. One of the best examples I have, and one of the only examples I have, is Z-Moves. Z-Moves happened during the Gen 7 hype, when we had the games from Gen 7. Sun and Moon, Ultra Sun and Moon, you get the idea. They did not bring Z-Moves over to Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee. They brought Megas over. And the thing is, that makes sense because <clears throat> Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, they didn't bring Z-Moves over. They brought Megas back. But if it's Gen 7 hype or Gen 8 hype, wouldn't you either tease the new mechanic or bring back the last one? Megas and Z-Moves existed for a limited time in the same space in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon due to the fact that when you beat the game, you could act as the Megas. People want to do Megas more, but we got Z-Moves instead because just how things work. Dynamaxing is pretty much going to be the Z-Move treatment. They're going to get rid of it. I'm sure you're probably yourself, but, but Gen 7 hype was longer. No, it wasn't. Gen 7 hype, what we're going to call it, extended from two years, 2016 to 2017, and Sword and Shield is going to last from 2019 to 2020, thanks to the DLC. Meaning that this is the same period of time before Gen 4 is released, and the same amount of time that we got Z-Moves in the game and not Megas. Meaning this is proof that we're not going to get Dynamaxing, but I can go one further step. Eternus is specifically in the Gather region, and that's where the Darkest Day happened. How is this proof? The reason this is proof is because if you wanted to add Dynamaxing to Gen 4, and you had Gigantamax Polkia, Gigantamax Dialga, Gigantamax Giratina, Gigantamax Arceus, if you had the four Gigantamax Legendaries, you would have to put Eternus in a league above them. Because the only way they can access their main forms is because of the fact that Eternus was there to give them those forms. But that doesn't make any sense because Pokey and Dialga were around before Eternatus, so how can their strongest forms be accessed because of some of them that came before them? Even if you want to say all the other Pokemon had Gigantamaxes and they had specific Primals, that wouldn't make much sense as Primals goes hand in hand with Megas, and the Pokemon that have Gigantamaxes would not be found in Galar, thus would never have interacted with Dynamax Energy. There will be hundreds of Gigantamaxes that we know about, but they'd only be able to be discovered if there are Raid Dens or Dynamax Dens in Sinnoh, but we know that they're not because of the fact that it is exclusive to Galar because that's where Eternatus has gone to. There is one scenario that could, and I mean really, really could, bring Dynamaxing and Gigantamaxing over to Sinnoh. And it is all about geography. I'm sure you're probably thinking to yourself, what does geography have to do in a Pokemon game? Well, here's where you start to realize something. So, with the DLC, we've expanded Galar in two directions. There's rumors that we're going to get more DLC, which might be smart, I'm not sure. But the Isle of Armor is to the east of Galar. And the Crown Tundra is to the south. Now, the Isle of Armor is not important in this discussion at all. You could say that it's near Calls due to the environments that's there and it could very well be near Kalos due to the fact that Britain is near France and that makes a ton of sense but there's something interesting that I don't think anyone has noticed about the way that the Crown Tundra is positioned if you look at the Crown Tundra where the map would be it would be south of Galar and the way that Sinnoh's ice the Crown Tundra is south of Galar meaning if you're gonna look at the Sinnoh map and compare it to the Galar map the icy parts of the region would overlap on each other. The Crown Tundra could easily be 
at the top of Sinnoh. And the reason that I mention this is because we know that Reggie Gigas moved the continents around. And it just so happens that Reggie Gigas is in Sinnoh. Meaning if you want to say that the Crown Tundra was originally from Sinnoh is not that far of a claim. Especially when you consider the fact that the icicle regions are right next to each other. Okay, so uh, something important that I just noticed during the editing process. And it's kind of important. So, I said that in the the video that Reggie Gigas was able to move the continents around and that it makes sense for him to have pushed the Isle of, not the Isle of Armor, to push the Crown Tundra back in case of like an emergency, like if the darkest day happened and to separate the Dynamaxing from the rest of the world, he just pushed it or whatever. But I didn't actually mention the fact that there's new Reggies in the Crown Tundra, which if we're going to go based off of the theory that I had would be relative to where Reggie Gigas is therefore he could have easily made the Reggies there and pushed them back to protect the Crown Tundra from the event. I just realized that while editing and it just came to my mind meaning it makes sense for Reggie Gigas to actually be in Galar because he made Reggies there. So saying that he pushed the Crown Tundra back from Sinnoh or that he has been to Galar in some way shape or form to prove that they're next to each other isn't even that big of a claim. The island of the Crown Tundra, if it's not associated with Sinnoh, could easily have just been created somehow naturally. But still, that would mean that Galar is somewhat close to Sinnoh, so Reggie Gigas could actually walk it. So that's another little thing that I just noticed. Uh, and enjoy the video. In the real world, Sinnoh is based off of a part of Japan, so that wouldn't make much sense. But we don't actually know the way that the regions are formed in the games. All that we know is that Kanto and Jodo are next to each other and the Pokemon Ranger regions are somewhat in the same area. Assuming this, either Sinnoh and Hoenn are going to be far from Kanto or near Kanto. And we can even start to piece together the regions based off the region of variants. Kanto, if you don't know, would be near Alola because all of the Pokemon that are regional variants in Alola are Kanto Pokemon, meaning that they would have had to travel somewhere close. And if we're going to say that Hoenn has Megas just like Kanto does, Hoenn... Kanto and Kalos would also have to be near each other, meaning that if Kalos is, in fact, near Galar, that would mean that Sinnoh would have to be somewhere near that region as well. And what better place to put it than under Galar? The only frozen place that you can actually find in Galar is before Winden and in Surchester because that's surrounded by mountains and that causes the flow of the air to change and become colder because it's trapped there. That explains why the Pokemon are the way they are. Meaning it's not that far-fetched to say that Sinnoh is under Galar. But if that's true, doesn't that mean that Sinnoh and Galar were once the same region? Not necessarily as a Turner's could have easily tried to find what was the Great Tree, which is somewhat connected to Eternatus. And if that was a part of the Sinnoh region at one point, it makes total sense why there would be Dynamax spots. He ventured past the Crown Tundra to find more places to expand Dynamaxing. That is the only plausible situation, but there are still some holes in it. For example, in the original games, why wasn't Dynamaxing in there? Unless this is a different universe where Dynamaxing is the dominant thing, there would have to be some way that Eternatus would have had to come here and still cause the darkest day. Because Eternatus could exist before the darkest day he could have roamed around the world but that doesn't make much sense as he would have pretty much spread dynamax energy everywhere I meaning he must have stayed in a concentrated area for most of his life or its life i'm sorry people have been talking about they're gonna do artificial dynamaxing but here's my problem with that if they do bring artificial dynamaxing and gigantic into the mix it's it's over you could pretty much take dynamax energy absorb it from a battle and keep it locked in like this capsule and use it whenever you want but then you could have megas and z moves that are portable as well and technically they are portable but with dynamaxing it's specifically to the gallery region dynamaxing can only be used when there is a power spot nearby so harnessing the energy from a power spot into a device might not be that difficult as Z-moves and Megas don't necessarily have to be used in their region. Z-moves are exclusive to Alola, but that doesn't mean that you can't bring that Z-move over somewhere else. The only reason that Galar has exclusive Dynamaxing is because the energy required is only in Galar, hence Eternatus. In fact, Pokemon Go recently brought Mega Evolution back to the scene. Sure, people don't like it because it's not infinite or whatever you have to keep constantly gaining energy but it means that they haven't forgotten about it and because of this there could be a way to bring megas into Sinnoh 
especially when it makes a lot more sense that we know that primal Dialga exists and it make a lot more sense to refine on that and also make primal Polkia and primal Giratina and primal Arcea. You could easily split primals and megas into two different forms. The ancient, more powerful creators of the world can have primals while the lesser demigod-like Pokemon can have megas. So for example, Palkia, Dialga, Giratina, Arceus, Regigigas, they all get primals. But on the other hand, Pokemon like maybe Heatran, Cresselia, Darkrai, they all get Megas if you're going to distribute them evenly. Arceus could also get a Mega because in a way he's sort of the creator of everything. But that would still make more sense for him to have Primal as he was would have been at his peak when the universe was created. Just like Garner and Kyogre, they were stronger back when they started to fight beforehand. So giving Arceus a Primal makes loads more sense than giving him a Mega just like with the rest of them. Megas have to work with a bond with trainer and Pokemon. Primals, on the other hand, can easily be achieved without the need for help. Rayquaza is the only Pokemon that doesn't need a Megastone or help from a person, except when you realize that it can only be obtained through the prayers of people. Primals specifically can be used by the Pokemon whenever it wants, as long as it has the item or the energy to do so. Meaning if you're gonna give Arceus a Mega or a Primal, it'd make more sense for a primal as that would have been his peak power without the without the interactions of humans. And I think it's a high possibility that we're going to be getting Megas and possibly primals back in Gen 4 Remake. This makes a ton of sense as Hoenn didn't introduce a new feature or didn't have any features at all and kept Megas and introduced primals to us. Which makes a lot more sense than just carrying on a no tradition and leaving Megas, which were exclusive to X and Y, aka Kalos, until Megastones were found in other regions where meteors had struck. Because the meteor that crashed into Hoenn also had keystones, it makes a lot more sense that meteors filled with the energy for Megas could have crashed a long time ago. And maybe the extinction of the fossil Pokemon can be linked to the meteor that hold Megastones. That's why Megas are distributed along the region. You can find Pokemon with Megas in Kanto, Hoenn, Unova to name a few, Sinnoh. It just makes a ton of sense. And the Megas would go hand in hand with Sinnoh's Pokemon. For example, Mega Garchomp, Mega Obama Snow, etc, etc. This makes a lot of sense to introduce the Mega feature into Sinnoh as Megas is not exclusive and can be found pretty much everywhere. Or anywhere if you wanted to. Maybe in some regions, Megas and the energy contradicts each other like Dynamaxing and Mega. Energy would contradict each other because too much energy would be in one place. So if you're going to introduce Dynamaxing and Megas in the same region like you did Megas and Z-Moves, there would have to be a feature that allowed Megas to not Dynamax because that's way too overpowered. Having two on both would either corrupt the Pokemon and lose control of it, or it would make it incredibly overpowered and broken in the metagame. Either way, that's my thoughts on this matter. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Peace out.